With Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy and the Almighty Dragon Rulers right around the corner, the 2013 format was seeing tons of diversity. Mermail, Dino Fist, Tin Plate Gadgets, Windup, Insector, Synchro Infernity, Evil Swarm, Constellar, and many others were vying for top cut slots at numerous high level events. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code CMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. What is going on? I feel like I'm losing my touch. I can't seem to win a match to save my life. Well, one thing I know for sure is that moving in a dragon ruler format isn't going to help things. So Simo and I are going to spend a couple of weeks exploring the decks and strategies that emerged during March, April, and May of 2013, right before the release of Lords of the Tachyon Galaxy. He's got a wheel with four decks. I've got a wheel with four decks. Hopefully we'll ring one interesting episode out of these. Now of these four lists, only one of them is really good, and it's wind-up. Uh, the other ones were quite powerful and found both at the regional and YCS level. Synchro Infernity is a really difficult to pilot combo deck. Chaos Agents is an amalgamation of both Chaos Dragons and Agents into a singular deck powered by really powerful light and darkness monsters. But the one I'm really angling for this episode is Hunter. I figure I've got three spins banked, so let's see what we can do. All right, big hunter, 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 big hunter. First try, baby. Easy as that. See you in deck. Well, you guys asked for it, so we are here to deliver. The wheel has made its triumphant appearance to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! We actually took some of your guys' advice and made two separate wheels, so that way Joseph and I aren't going to find ourselves in a mirror match. Now, in all honesty, this is just our feeble attempt to just not play Dragon Rulers for as long as humanly possible, because A, we don't really want to, and B, we need time to actually learn how to play that deck, because that deck is incredibly complicated. So, we're going to go ahead and explore the 2013 format leading into to Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, as well as Dragon Ruler format, because as Joseph and I were looking and researching for this episode, it just seemed like there were so many different decks that we haven't seen in a while or that were actually playable during this time. So we may spend an episode or two here spinning the wheel a bit just to see what sort of matchups come up, because I feel like we haven't done an adequate job encompassing everything from this era in Yu-Gi-Oh! And maybe something to explore in Time Wizard format for sure. So we have Insector, Constellar, Mermail, and Teleport Karakuri on our wheel. All of these decks I have played before, with the exception of Constellar. I think Joseph has a deck on his wheel he has not played before either, but we both pick the decks that we have become known for in History of Yu-Gi-Oh!, so that way we're going to be at least somewhat familiar with them and uh, hopefully create some interesting matchups. I'm going to be honest with you, though, I'm hard rolling for Constellar because we haven't played it yet, and I think it would be very funny to play for this episode. So I've got three spins since I won the last episode, so let's go ahead and spin. See if we can get Constellar, ladies and gentlemen. It shouldn't be too difficult, but uh, hopefully that can be the case. Keep going, 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 keep going. No, it's Mermaid. Oh, okay. Well, I've got two more spins. That might be as close as I get, sadly. Let's hope that isn't the case. Come on. Constellar, Constellar, Constellar. I am one with Pleiades. I'm one with M7. I'm one with all of the, all of the light. Oh, God. Why does it want me to play Mer? I've played Mermail like four episodes in a row already, please. One more time. One more time. One more time. One in four chance. Please. Slowing down. It's slowing down. Keep going. Keep going. What are the fucking chances? Of <gasps> that was right on the edge. So it's early 2013, the eve of the Dragon Rulers is upon us, but before we jump headfirst into a two-deck format, let's take a look at some of the lists that existed on the periphery of the previous one. The Hunters are first and foremost, they are a series of four-star thunder-type monsters. These monsters all permit you to normal summon an additional level four light thunder-type monster from your hand, except their similar name, as long as they are on the field. These normal summons stack, so if you go from a Ma Hunter into a Pa Hunter, who 
has the exact same effect, you can go back into a Ma Hunter and back into a Pa Hunter. This is, if you haven't figured it out by now, a way to summon Shockmaster. In fact, most rank 4 spam decks right now had exactly this guy on the tip of their tongue, but this deck was better in exactly one scenario. If your opponent had max C, each additional summon from the Hunters isn't a special, it's a normal, and for that reason it played a lot more effectively around some of the hand traps that you would see this format. This is also the debut deck for Thunder Seahorse. This is a card that is incredibly powerful, reminiscent of Thunder Dragon. You can discard this card to add two level 4 light thunder type monsters with the same name and 1600 or less attack from your deck to your hand. Now you can't special the turn that you activate this effect, but if you go for a huge push off the back of multiple normal summoned Ma or Pa Hunters, that's not that big of a deal. Finally, this deck is playing Vylon Prism. This card is particularly weird. It's a Thunder Tuner 4 star, and if it's used as material or sent to the graveyard by any reason, it can equip to a monster you control and give it 1000 attack during the damage step only. You're usually using this in service of 8 star synchros like Crimson Blader, which, if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, prevents your opponent from normal or special summoning level 5 or higher monsters during their next turn. It's a very easy deck to play, it's got a couple of very interesting lines, but a particularly low ceiling, and unfortunately during this period, it was relegated to just bubbling out of top cuts and a couple of really impressive regional finishes, including the March 2013 finish by Patrick Clary that we're focusing on today. So, let's go through the individual cards. We've got Gores, Honest, Double Tragodia, Triple Maxi, Triple Ma Hunter, Triple Pa Hunter, Double Sis Hunter, Triple Thunder Seahorse, Two Vylon Prism, Book of Moon, Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Reborn, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, Two Duality, Two Recycling Batteries like Salvage, but honestly better in this specific scenario, Bottomless Trap Hole, Fiendish Chain, Two Mirror Force, A Solemn Judgment, A Solemn Warning, A Starlight Road, and Two Torrentials. In the side, we've got Three Snowman Eater, Surprising No One, Two Copies of Thunder King Ryo, the third MST to Soul Taker, which was everywhere this format. It outs so many important must kills, Dust Tornado, Triple Macro, and Double Royal Decree. If you want to cosplay as something like Macro Rabbit. In the extra, we've got Colossal Fighter, Crimson Blader, Scrap Dragon, Stardust, Abyss Dweller, Diamond Dyer, Gaga, Ga, uh, Cowboy, Gem Knight, Pearl, My Stroke, The Symphony Jin, Shockmaster himself, Utopia, Corn, Papli Operative, Star Liege, Paladynamo, a really interesting rank four enabled exactly by Light Monsters and Roach. So with that, let's check out the games. Man, do I love Kara Curry. This deck is so cool. I'm so happy I've gotten to play multiple iterations of this deck. I'm not sure if this is going to be better than the Girgia Kara Curry version, but I got to be honest, this deck looks insane. Like I, They just made this deck crazier and crazier as the formats evolved. But let's go ahead and do the card by card, ladies and gentlemen. So if you haven't seen the previous episodes of History where I've piloted a similar version of this deck, I'd highly recommend you go watch them because they are highly entertaining. But first up, we have Nanishi. This card allows you to get an extra normal summon of a Kara Curry, which allows you to go into some of your combos. We have Inasachi, or Inasichi, excuse me, which allows you to just add a Kara Curry from your deck to your hand. We have Kuik. Kuik's okay. This card is neat because when it destroys opponent's monster by balance and to grave, you can special summon a level four lower Kara Curry from your grave, and that allows you to go into synchro plays that way. Uh, Nisamu is like a recruiter for the Kara Curry deck. It's a little bit slow, but it's not terrible. Three copies of Nishipachi. This one's nice because you're able to modulate the positions of your Kara Curries, which allow you to enable a wide myriad of abilities. And then we get to the fun stuff. Three Psychic Commander and three Solar Wind Jammer. So the namesake of the deck is obviously Teleport Kara Curry. And the reason for this is that E-Tele can get you into Psychic Commander, which is a tuner and allows you to start synchroing at a much faster pace. If you look at the Beret and the Beredo, they only require a tuner. It doesn't have to be a machine tuner, which means that you can just immediately e telly out Psychic Commander to start going crazy. And Solar Wind Jammer is a new card as well, which is sort of a Cyber Dragon, except it's if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card. It has some stat reductions, but honestly, that doesn't even matter because you're most likely just going to be synchroing off into all of your plays. These two cards help the deck really take off into the combo direction, and I hope we get to pull off some crazy combos for this episode for you guys. And speaking of which, we have three copies of Desynchro. You know when you see this card that it is not going to be used for healthy purposes. This card reads, target a synchro monster on the field. Return that target to the extra deck. Then, if all the monsters that were used for the synchro summon to that monster are in your graveyard, you can special summon all of them. What's crazy about this is that Beret and Beredo on synchro summon allow you to special summon a card curry monster from your deck. So the advantage that Desynchro offers you is that you're able to just immediately get another one of these out and then just keep comboing and keep going, which is absurd. We have the three E-Telly. This makes sense because we have the three Psychic Commander. Not once per turn, by the way. Heavy Storm, and if we didn't have enough combo pieces, Triple Instant Fusion. This card is used to get one card only, Cybersaurus, which is another level five monster that we 
we can tune with our psychic commander or any of our tuners for that matter and just start comboing off. We have uh, two new cards as a matter of fact since we last played Karakuri. Karakuri Anatomy and Karakuri Cash Cash. Now Karakuri Anatomy is basically six samurai united except for Karakuri's. The difference is you only get counters on it when the positions of these monsters change and Karakuri Cash Cash is sort of a rota and it's interesting because some variants of this deck play maxed out copies of this but you do need to control a Karakuri monster. It does change the battle position but you're able to search for any other Karakuri. So it's interesting to only see one of this card in this build which did top I believe YCS Austin and some versions actually choose to max out on this. We also have a monster reborn double MST and double night beam as well as a pot of avarice. We're just trying to take out back row so our combo can go off and then for the traps only four of them uh fiendish chain decree warning and judgment. Uh, I said those in reverse order but nonetheless uh just a small handful of traps just to ensure that our combos will go through and then fiendish chain I guess for one way to disrupt our opponent. The extra deck is super simple and straightforward. We've got the Cyber Sauruses for the Instant Fusion. Allied Justice Catastrophe is just a nice five to go into. Triple Beret, Triple Beredo, because we're going to be trying to spam out into these as much as possible. And then we have some of the Naturias, Beast and Barkia, or excuse me, Beast and Landois. I don't want to get that confused because Landois is much different because it negates monster effects. And the Naturias are nice because the Karakuris are all Earth, so these are pretty easy to summon. We have Scrap Dragon and Stardust because they're just like some of the best synchros we have available. And then a couple extra deck monsters, a Big Eye and a Zen Mains because we do have a a fair bit of threes, especially now that Psychic Commander is in the mix. Then for the side, Triple Cyber Dragon, this is when we know we're going second. This is just basically more copies of Solar Windjammer, but it can actually attack the opponent. Double Veiler, Double Maxi for again, once we know we're going second. Double Dimensional Fisher, this deck really doesn't care about the graveyard, except for like desynchro exactly. So if we want to play a more stun version of this deck, and I love the flexibility that Kara Curry has, we can take these out, put in Dimensional Fisher, and like our opponent's just going to struggle because all of our combos are perfectly fine. I guess like Kui is the only other anti-synergy there. I guess maybe Pot of Avarice as well. MST, another Night Beam, and then Double Bottomless, Phoenix Chain, and Royal Decree. This is where you can see the sideboard adjustments going in when we're going first. We can take out some of the going second cards and vice versa. So I can't wait to see what Joseph's playing. I don't really care because we're going to be comboing with Kara Curry and we're going to be having a blast. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Buddy, we're just doing anything and everything to not have to play Dragon Ruler format. If we spend like four episodes right before Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, I think I am perfectly okay with that. I mean, do you do you want to maybe uh, we could do uh, like like speed duels? Uh, we could uh, we could. Um, what, what what yeah? What other history aspects? Uh, dungeon can we dice cover? monsters. We're just there. That's over. a big one that we Rich missed. Dungeon yeah, dice sure. monster history. <laughs> oh man. I mean, for what it's worth, I don't think Dragon Rulers is that bad. The the format no. was pretty no. frustrating, but it wasn't, like, shallow. You know, there was a lot of depth to it. Um, but I yep. do want to make sure that we aren't missing out on a lot of the really interesting innovations that happened right before Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, and hopefully we'll see some of those this episode. Yeah, we just have to, you know, pump the view counts before Dragon Rulers, because no one's going <laughs> to watch those episodes. But in that case, let's go ahead and shout the patron. It is, I'd kiss MBT on the mouth, but only if he consented first. Thank you for the support, and thank you for, I, I guess, being forward thinking i guess i, I gotta I say nothing is gonna shock me anymore after that last episode of, of progression <laughs> series you gotta you gotta send me a text or something that's like joseph make sure you're not drinking when you hear this nah. name. Oh. it's more fun when it goes when it happens that way I guess uh, okay so. i guess it is got the hands up i do all right uh i'm gonna go with even ah uh, it's even yeah it was a four and um i don't know it, you know because you're in for a bad time I was thinking it was for the number of slices that we each had on our respective wheel. So I guess it paid off. All right, let's see what we're getting in our hand. Oh. Ooh, okay. All right, this looks good. Ooh, oh, you're so fucked, buddy. All right, main phase one. Yep. I'm going to summon the greatest monster in Duel Monsters, Solar Wind Jammer. What? The, oh, it's Constellar. Son of a bitch, it's Constellar. All right, that's fine. Oh, you think it's Constellar? You think it's Constellar, you idiot? What are you going to say when I normal summon Psychic Commander? 
What the hell was on your pie? I'm looking right now. Oh, this will make sense no. when I go ahead and synchro both of these cards for Karakuni Barreto. Uh, may I activate this effect, sir? I don't. What, what the fuck am I going to do about it? Go you ahead. You could have effect, Valor. I don't fucking know. All right. Uh, <laughs> so the, the one issue with this is that uh, I need to figure out where to go next from this point because the rest of my hand is sort of weird. I've got some cool things I can do, but I don't know how deep I want to go in here. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to bring out uh, Nishipachi. And then when Nishipachi is no more specialed, I can target a monster and change its battle position. I'm going to pick himself, yep. and this will trigger Burrito so I can draw a card. Yeah, just go off, King. That is hilarious, but I don't think it actually does anything for me. All right, uh, Instant Fusion. Yep. Let's grab ourselves the second best card in Yu-Gi-Oh, Cybersaurus. Jesus Christ. Wow, you are deep in the tank on this one. Oh, uh, we're deep. We're deep. Uh, let's go ahead and sync both of these off. Uh, do I want to keep going? Is the question. I could, potentially. Summon another Beredo? Yeah, we'll bring out another Beredo, sure. I'm down with this. Uh, trigger Beredo. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's get out uh, Nishi Pachi, changes to attack, draw another card. Mod check once per turn? Mod check once uh, per turn? Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then we're going to activate another just absolutely stupid card in my deck, D-Synchro. <laughs> Oh my god, am I getting FTK'd? What the hell? I wish you were getting FTK'd. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and desync off this copy of our Beredo. Let's get our pieces back here. This actually goes back to the extra deck. Let's make sure I actually do this properly. Uh, okay. So, I'm really trying to think where I go from this position. Oh, this is kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and resync these up for a... Beredo. Uh, use the Beredo effect. This time, I'm not going to grab a Nishipachi. This time, I'm going to grab myself Merchant. Now, Merchant won't trigger. It's only on normal summon, sadly. But uh, I can go ahead and sync these both up. And we're just going to end on Naturia Beast, set two and pass. Good luck, buddy. You're fucking with me. Wow, that is... <laughs> that's hell. It's actual hell. All right, uh, main one. Uh, I'm going to... Yes. Uh, normal summon. Uh, what? What is your back row? God, if you didn't, if you hadn't made Nachuria Beast, I'd be fine here. I, I picked I this up from uh, reading the feature matches, where Desmond's end board just typically going first ended on Nat Beast and Beredo. <laughs> I wonder if I just like scoop them up and we go to the next game. Hmm. I, you could. I might not know what you're playing. That could uh, give you an edge. No, no, no. I'll go for it. I'm gonna normal summon Ma Hunter. On the Hunters. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Sure. I'm trigger the effect. I will special summon Vylon Prism. Oh, okay. I'm not the only one playing bad cards then. <laughs> sure, Whoa! You better watch your fucking mouth, buddy. This card's crazy. All right, I'm going to sink these two off, and we're going to make something that will die to bottomless. Uh, am I supposed to make Stardust Dragon here just because it beats bottomless? Oh, my God. You have so much. You have so much crap. All right, I'm going to make... Crimson Blader. Okay, that does die to bottomless, yeah. but I don't have bottomless. I have warning. Okay, that's that's much better. Uh, then I will not pay the five for the uh, Vylon Prism in that case. All right, well, um, this was uh, an enjoyable experience. Uh, I will set two and pass it back to you. I mean, you're technically not dead here. Oh, yeah, so. of course, yeah. <laughs> I, it, it could All go right. either way, you know? It could. It realistically could, buddy. Okay, so this is what? I've got 56, 76, 7,800 damage on board. You're telling me I'm 200 off of killing you? You see, if I had uh, simply had the Vylon Prism trigger, then you could kill me. It was a real mistake of you to fire off that warning. It was. Yeah, absolutely. So now... <sighs> What back row does Hunter? I believe I feel like Hunter's a deck that just plays like 20 back row. So I want to be a bit careful here as to how I navigate this. Hmm. I'm just like combing my extra deck for how I'm outing this part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I have to go for it, right? I don't really think there's any better way to do this. I'll run out Psychic Commander. I, I have nothing to this. That's fine. Uh, okay, cool. Battle? Yeah. 14. This is Mirror Force. Judgment. Yeah, I figured that was happening. So let me get this straight. You opened full combo for Beredo, Beredo, Nat Beast into Solemn Warning Judgment. I had heavy. I had heavy. It didn't matter. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. How the fuck am I beating this? Every time I play against this deck, I have no fucking clue.
how it was not the best shit you could be playing in the entire room. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me with that? You drew so much. You summoned so many monsters. What do I? What do I do to that? This is like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. This deck is oh, crazy. God. Right. Oh my All god. Right. Desmond Johnson's a god. All right. Well, let's see how well the Thunder can uh, fare. Or excuse me, the Hunter can fare up to. Uh, this deck going first this time. Good luck, buddy. Jeez, good luck to you too. Um, all right. I mean, this is pretty boring. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, Ma Hunter. Sure. Normal to Pa Hunter. Okay. Normal to Sis Hunter. Okay. Sure. That's you add, right? Uh, <laughs> it would let me add if I already oh, had in Hunters in the grave. grave. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, bad. So instead, we're just uh, overlaying for Shockmaster. Oh, uh, that's pretty bad. All right. Uh, what are you calling? Bad. This is a shocker. I know. Uh, I'm going to call Monster. Uh, Wouldn't have guessed. Go okay. for it. He's going to call Monster, huh? That's quite funny. Initially, I didn't think that was going to be a problem, but then I realized there isn't a specific card in my extra deck, which I think would have solved the problem. Okay, I think this is the move, although it's not fantastic. Uh, I'm going to heavy. Yeah, I mean, that's rough. Uh, it's MST and bottomless. Funny enough, I don't know if that would have even affected my play in the slightest. Uh, I will normal psychic commander. I will set two. Yeah. And that's all we're doing. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Stand by main. I almost want a Shockmaster for traps here. I know that you have a bunch of stupid bullshit in your deck. I am going to... I'm going to call Monster again. That sounds right. I will normal... Do I want to play around Torrential? Heavy Storm double back row. All right. Let's just go to combat. I'll attack here. Okay. So this is going to be nine that I take. That's fine. All right. Uh, second main... I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, we'll draw. That solves the problem. I will activate instant fusion. That does solve the problem. Okay. I'll grab Cybersaurus. Sure. e -Telly. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I will grab a Psychic Commander. Now you can see why I had that Commander in attack position. Yes. Uh, we'll sync him up. And it sucks because I won't get an effect here, but I can kill Shockmaster, which is also pretty nice. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't think it matters. I guess since I can't use monster effects, I think Stardust is actually slightly better here. Uh, so I'll go to battle and I'll hit for two. I'll take two here. That'll do it for me. Okay, I mean, maybe. Uh, I'll go recycling batteries here. Let me grab Mahunder and Sishunder. Okay, the uh, Salvage of Thunders, not bad. It's kind of worse than Salvage. Because you I mean, have to get he... thunders. <laughs> hmm, where are we going from here? Okay, uh, I'm going to normal summon Ma Hunter. Okay, I've seen this before. Is that okay? Yep. I'll trigger the effect. Sure. I'll normal summon Pa Hunter. Okay. I'll trigger the effect. Sure. I'll normal summon Sis Hunter. And this time you can use an effect. Ba -ba. All right, so I will banish this Paw Hunter, and then I'll I'll get him eventually. Okay, uh, now I'll go into the second Shockmaster. Now that actually wouldn't do anything. I'm gonna go into a really sussy card. Uh, okay. Starlege Paladynamo. Ooh, this card's sick. Okay. He's nuts. sure. So um, I'll trigger the effect, and I'll target your Stardust to change its attack to zero, and its effects are yep. negated. Now it's not till the end of the turn, and then if this card is destroyed, I get to just cycle it. Yeah. It's right. a pretty good card. So I'll try for it. I'll try and get in for 14. Uh, That will connect, sure. And then I'll try and get in for 2,000. That's fine. Okay, so this is the horrifying part of the duel where um, I don't know what you have in store, and this deck can kill me out of nowhere. So uh, I'll proceed to end phase, and I'll add the Paw Hunter back to my hand. Sounds good to me. Uh, I think I'm going to need a lot of help here if I want to salvage this game. Oh, that I know that might... silence. I know you <laughs> I know you just made the, the Poggers face. I'm going to watch this uh, back and find out that you drew Snatch Deal. I thought this was good, but then I don't think it's as good as I thought it was, if that makes sense. Uh, but I still think it's pretty good for what it's worth. So now I need to think. Uh, let's give it a shot. Normal Nanishi. Yeah, fine. Go for it. Extra Normal Kuik. There's two pretty good ones, yeah. Yeah, Kuik would be nice if I actually had something engraved to bring back, but uh, sadly, I do not. So uh, we're just actually going to sync up here for Bure. Uh, any seven will do it, sure. Trigger Bure. We're going to grab ourselves a copy of Nisamu here. That's fine. I'm going to e -telly Oh, Jesus. Wow. Oh, good thing I didn't Psychic call Trap. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> right? I was really hoping you did. That would have been ideal. But uh, sync these off for Beredo number two. Yep. 
or beret number two, excuse me. Uh, so this one will trigger. And with this effect, I'm going to grab, uh, I think, Nisbachi. And then on summon, I have to trigger him. So I'll just put him to attack. You got it. All right. Uh, Desynchro. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it again. Okay. So I'm just going to skip steps here. I'm just going to resync the Beredo. Yeah, sure. Uh, trigger Beredo. I'm going to get the Merchant. Sure. I'm going to sync these two into Naturia Beast once more. All right. Uh, then I'm going to overlay the Beredos oh, for Big Eye. Oh, Jesus Christ. This card is legal now. Oh, God. Because... You have to control Paladynamo to get his effect, so I'm actually going to take him from you. Oh, good lord. Okay, uh, there you go. Battle hit. I'll take six here. And 22. Big guy yeah. cannot attack, sadly. Okay. Go ahead. Stand by main. I mean, I'm just dead here, right? Oh, my God. Uh, I'll I pass. know you have Paw Hunter. Oh, pass. Okay, I'll draw. Main one. What am I scared of here? You didn't do anything. Uh, like, gores, I guess, could be a thing. All right, I mean, let's see what happens. 2K. Yeah, you got it. I could have set Whoa! the paw hunter. I felt confident well, making that play because I had a fucking dark hole in hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Every one of my pieces of interaction is a spell. Isn't a cherry beast a fun and interactive card, buddy? <laughs> That was atrocious. Wow, that was true pain, actual pain. And it does me no comfort to know if you had gone first, I was just completely fucked. Oh, uh, man. Were you? I actually don't think that's true because my hand was double e Telly Psychic Commander, and I think the, uh, I think the Nanishi and heavy. So I don't know what I would have actually done that turn you one. You drew because the instant fusion? I drew the instant fusion, sure. yes. Uh, All right. So I <laughs> I actually don't know what I was going to do going first. I guess I could have made like Zen mains with Nanishi and the Psychic Commander, yeah. which is like fine. Well, but, uh, do you want to try uh, game three? Yeah, I'm down. Let's. I want to see if you can uh, take a game off of it. Let's do it. Okay, um, I don't know how I intend to beat, uh, Naturia Beast, but we are gonna find out together, you and I, and... I think the Shockmaster was actually pretty decent, uh... just depending on, like, the way my hand looks. Uh, this hand is act uh, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this hand is cra- uh... Okay, so we're gonna go Thunder Seahorse, a card we haven't gotten to see yet. We have it. This card's so cool. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, uh, it's all right. Uh, the unfortunate truth is that it has this little bit of text on it uh, that says uh, you cannot special summon the turn that you activate this effect. Oh, excellent. I thought it was going to be the part that says you have to add thunder monsters. <laughs> oh, well, uh, so you could theoretically add two more thunder seahorse here uh this is a hard once per turn though uh, i think i want to just add stuff and be prepared for a big summon chain next turn uh we don't have bro hunter yet so let's go ahead and grab ma hunter and sis hunter they need to have the same name sir sorry um ma hunter and ma hunter <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yes, set up for next turn seems pretty good. Uh, there's no chance I'm going to kill you, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I'm just going to set one and pass. Uh, let's see if I can kill you. Main one? Uh, maybe. All right, let's find out. Uh, best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Windjammer. Uh, yes, no response to this. Next best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! e -Telly. I'll maxi here. Fuck. Do I care? Just sure. Kill me through the maxi. I'm just maybe I just kill you through the maxi. Honestly, let's try it. All right. Uh, we'll go psychic commander. Get your draw. Yep. Uh, then we're gonna sync both of these for Beredo. Yeah. <laughs> Get your draw. Yeah, yeah. Trigger Beredo. Is that fine? Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, there's probably a line to kill you here. I imagine. All right. I'm gonna bring out uh, Nishipachi. Uh, trigger his effect. We'll switch into attack. We'll yeah. draw a card. Then I'm going to. It's not what I was hoping for. I'll be completely honest. Uh, I'm gonna desynchro. Oh my lord! I'm gonna get drawn <laughs> out. Yep. So we'll bring both of these back. You get to draw here. Uh, yeah. Resync. <laughs> yeah. 
Draw a card. <laughs> Trigger Burrito. <laughs> yep. Uh, think what I want here. I need to make sure I do this properly. Uh, with this Burrito, I'm going to bring out Nisamu. Okay. I will activate Kara Curry Cash Cash. Okay. I mean, this is pretty normal card for you to have in your deck. I'm surprised. Right? It's a one of, actually. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to put this Nisamu to a... Well, actually, I search first, and then I change the battle position. So I'm going to search for a Ninishi, and then I will change the battle position of Nisamu. This triggers Beredo, because I've not done that yet, because I resynchroed it. I will draw a card. I have yet to normal summon, because this turn started with e Telly Solar Wind Jam. <laughs> Yes, that is true. I'm going to sink the Nispachi and the Nisamu for a Bure. Okay. Uh, this will trigger Bure. I can summon another Karakuri. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go for, I guess, another Nisamu. That's fine. Yep. I will finally commit to my normal summon, I think. Uh, it is the Nanishi I added off of Cash Cash. Yep. I will sink Nanishi and Nisamu. I guess I'll go for Landoys here. Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, I will. How much is this? A million? Pot of Avarice. All right, so on Landoys summon, I'm going to Torrential. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have Avarice still, so yeah, I'm not yeah, out of yeah. it yet. <laughs> Avarice, you're, you're way into more stupid With nonsense. With you having fucking a million cards in hand. All right, this is fun. Uh, I mean... Uh, I was... I, there was no way I could get into Stardust. I'll explain this after, but I had no way to make Stardust or... Uh, I was trying to go for Scrap if it might have been Mirror Force, but was uh, like, it was going to be... A, I was going to wait till I dropped like Landoys to, for Torrential to even come down. So I wanted to like end on Stardust there and I just couldn't uh, find a way to do it. I spent the whole time so, being like, oh my God, if I see eight, I'm going to lose it. All right. Uh, why don't we shuffle back at this point? We have like a million of these cards. So I'll just put back all the car curries, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Windjammer. Uh, whoops. Goes to the deck. So I have a million of these cards. So shuffle them up and we'll draw two. Uh, funny enough, I'd actually have a play if I didn't commit to my normal, but I couldn't have killed you if I committed to my normal either. All right, uh, I'm just going to set two and hope you didn't draw heavy. Go ahead. I've got 45 cards in my hand. I, I drew heavy. All right, fine. Uh, it was Decree Fiendish Chain. Decree? Oh, that's, that's a pretty good one against me. Well, shoot, can I actually kill you? This is a little embarrassing. All right, uh, let's go... Um, Ma Hunter, I'll trigger the effect. Sure. Pa Hunter, I'll trigger the effect. Sure. Uh, Sis Hunter, I'll trigger the effect. Sure. Uh, Vylon Prism. Wait, no, this okay. this does not do that. Uh, I thought they were all Hunters. In fact, um, only Ma and Pa Hunter net you the normal. Oh wait. So just these aren't hard once per turns. They're not. You can just keep going, buddy. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> <laughs> I right, will go Mahunder into okay. Vylon Prism. I, I didn't go that much farther. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, really yeah. Just... Same result. That's fine. All right. Um, what are we doing here? Uh, I, do we have Gaga Ga Samurai yet? No, of course we don't. That would be too easy. Sheesh! I I legitimately do not have a win condition. You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can go... Well, I can't destroy you one You can have of the your, game on lock, at the very least. Yeah, I can't destroy one of your monsters, so I'm not going to be able to do, like, a Crimson Blader um, into locking you out of guys. Theoretically, I could just make Stardust. Colossal Fighter gets up to a 38, which is huge. That's that's enticing. Uh, man, I really want to make a Synchro with the Vylon Prism. Well, um... Boo. Just a question of if I want to play around... Gores or not? Uh, I think that I do. Uh, we'll just go one, two, three here for uh, Shockmaster. Oh, monster! Uh, I will. Uh, and then I'll go to combat. Try and do fifteen twenty-three. Take the thirty-eight. All right. Uh, second main. I'm just gonna, gonna get, Set a, all. get a get a couple of these out. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, there's. I there is actually I am actually going to have to discard for hand size here. Uh, I'm gonna wow lose seven monsters. A pot of duality. I think. Oh, oh okay, duality. A that little far sense. beyond that card mattering. All right, uh, we'll draw. I can't use monster effects, so I think I am dead. Uh, <laughs> so good game. Uh, you know, I don't know if I would have called it a good game. It was a game. Uh, it was, it was of, a game. I mean, but think about it. Even that game, the single one of this set that I won was determined by you doing a big combo. I just had Maxi, right? Like, uh, you well, just had the, uh, the, 
not the advantage, but the um, uh, the momentum in every single one of these. Yeah. So what's funny is is that Maxi doesn't even matter in all honesty in this deck because with you having the ability to go into Landois. And the fact that Landois can just negate Gores, negate Trag, if you have the OTK and if you had no back row, then Landois guarantees that Max C is actually irrelevant, as long as you have spell cards in hand. But to right. be fair, this deck plays like 17 spells. And after the Avarice would have resolved, I think I would have had one or two. So obviously, if you have like Gores, Trag, Trag, then I can't beat that. But I think for the most part, I probably would have been okay. And that's one of the scary things about this deck is that Landois is a criminally underrated card. I think as people have been going back exploring older formats, I think they've like started to realize this. And uh, this deck just takes advantage of it full heart. And what I love too is just that uh, just so much flexibility with this deck. Like once Solar Windjammer came out, which was a common, and it was just a card that <laughs> All it is is Cyber Dragon, but your opponent doesn't need monsters. Like, this single card just by itself put this deck on a completely another level. Being able to just enable you to go into Barreto so much easier, because before, in previous versions of this deck, you're relying on Cyber Dragon or possibly Instant Fusion, and Cyber Dragon requires you to be going second. Instant Fusion is fine, but it's a hard once per turn. Uh, Solar Windjammer allows you to just keep going by adding another extender. This is very much a deck that is inspired by modern deck building philosophies. And Desmond Johnson, uh, you know, was within like Patrick Hoban's inner circle. So that really isn't a surprise that, uh, you know, only being like eight-ish, nine-ish years old at the time of recording this, that this is where we start to see these modern deck building philosophies really come to light. It is, I, I mean, just, I, I, every time I see this deck, my breath is taken away. You know, um, we are playing some very interesting games uh, but they are kind of overshadowed by the fact that, like, Mermail Atlantean is a really, really strong deck. You know, Windup still exists. And both of those decks have the capacity to just kill you out of nowhere on turn one. So I was expecting, oh, you know, like, we are playing fun, interesting games. Uh, but in a larger tournament setting, you were likely to get sniped by some stuff like this. Um, yeah. I mean, this deck really looks like it could hang with the big boys. It's unbelievably strong and i mean i guess game two you drew a heavy storm but i mean it was in the format that's something you have to account for and yeah it, it looked exceptionally good i i am really uh blown away by not only uh the explosivity of this deck but really how much it's evolved to play around like the existence of gores and trag um you know as they become more popular uh the ability to uh, make really powerful set up plays even through a um a shock master you know uh we saw in uh game two that yeah like you can stall out for a fair amount of time even if i ever presented a lethal push you had a couple of e-tellies which would have done decent work at uh blanking attacks um and i i'm always always taken aback by the robust trap lineup like I can't believe this deck gets to play Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, it plays four traps. It's playing Warning, and Judgment, And you found two of them? Okay, don't tell me that shit. Oh, my God. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, Decree is the main trap of choice, too, because I believe uh, he's maining one and siding one, and then I think in, like, the next event, he just goes to maining Decrees, because if you're not playing traps, like, just why even bother, you know? You might as well just blank all your opponent's traps, especially with how back row heavy this format is between, like, Dino Fist, Gadget, your deck. I mean, the amount of decks that are playing probably 10-ish plus traps in this format is enumer like is numerous, and so you may as well just blank them all. But your deck, I, I love that this we got to show this deck off. Uh, for what it's worth, I tried hard spinning for Constellar. Mm -hmm. uh, I got Mermail, Mermail, and then on the edge of Mermail was this deck, and it just eked out at the end. So... Uh, I, it would have been funny to see Constellar versus Hunter because it's like the rank four slash rank five spam deck like going against each other. That would have been pretty sick. But your deck's neat because it's sort of like gadgets in a way where it's the rank four spamming aspect, but it obviously has many different pros and cons versus that deck. Yeah, um, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I don't think this deck's very good. Um, Hunter was around for a long time. Uh, people played different variants of it. You know, it continues to evolve as people play, like, 
battery men AAA in it and stuff. Uh, Thunder Seahorse is an exceptionally powerful card, and a lot of the reason that people tinkered with this thing. Um, and I really do love Vylon Prism to go into like a Crimson Blader that can't be outed by any that's monster. Sick. And then you just yeah. like, if you're playing against Mermail, like often that's just the end of the game, right? Like right. it just prevents them from uh, ever getting to anything that contests it. Theoretically, the same against you, but in reality, despite the fact that it's like a control deck, it still has to contest with all of the really powerful trap cards, spell cards, and uh, hand tools that beat other things. It has a slightly better matchup versus Maxi because you perform extra normals, not specials, normals. but not yep. that much better because you still have to like go for your Xyz eventually. It's glacially slow in terms of how quickly it turns the corner and relies a lot on a hand trap lineup of like Tragodias and Gores to not die. Uh, the tools to get rid of back row are just so powerful in this format. Um, to in my opinion, it's just one more in a long line of rank four strategies that eh, were fine uh, because Shockmaster existed but never really made it past you know um uh, topping regionals and low hits at ycs's sure and i think in all fairness the advantage here is that each of your main monsters just allows you to get another summon so you don't need to play bullshit like double summon right uh and because like you said it plays under maxi it is nice that if you get three hunters out then all of a sudden your opponent's face with having to stare down Shockmaster, even if they max c at that position you're only one for wanting the maxi whereas if i were going to be playing gadgets trying to do something similarly i would have to go tin plate goldfish special summon gadget that's one off of maxi so it's at minimum going to be a plus one and then if i have another way to get a gadget onto the field that's going to be a plus two off of Shockmaster. and so you know that's an advantage in a format where maxi is you know not in every deck but it's at least in the main or sideboard in some capacity and so you know i can see why some people might gravitate towards this if they already like a similar style of play that this deck offers but uh i do agree with you i think if you're just going to play this you might as well just play the gadget deck <laughs> yeah. well i i'm also happy that i burned it uh against this um you are you are just invincible on this deck i wouldn't have been able to beat this with windups i mean i i don't know this just must be a deck that i missed out on in a past life because <laughs> Man, I just, I love this fucking deck 10, so 10,000 years of Karakuri Girgia pilots passing down to you the skills to open Heavy Storm combo. Oh my god. Well, I, I had fun. I look forward to the next one. And after that, I look forward to six consecutive months of Dragon Rulers. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. I hope you enjoyed. As always, let's shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Tim Zuzer, X3, SJ Winchester, Chaotic Meeple, MBT Play Medolce, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Manhoven, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asin 05, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Rockslide, Jordan Coons, Iron Blazum, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Skyrose, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretch, John Tubes, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Dayser, Carlos CT, Flannel Daddy, Phoenix the Immortal, Einstein's Theory of MBT's Relative Toes, Hornet, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Jonah Messenger, TC gaming thanks for the sleeves dad matthew brady max mbt's ghost trick bmw tom russell why read cards when you can just click buttons helios 515 black acre thank you simo mbt gauge the rjb zero and ruxton 34 the entire state of indiana valen jackson justice for queen tira masu imagine committing a crime and finding out your lawyer is a yugi tubing rothschild mbt fans scare me more than covid simping for simo tyler h nicholas carpenter simo's harem of sexy yugi tubers nim noodle malaprinch of the burning tunnels mbt canceled by all community soon mike ty stella and zoe vermilion wonder waffle skull servant and the wandering doomed are boyfriends just an awesome name not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it and the undertaker versus simo and mbt thank you guys so much for watching the video and we will see you next time